I pretty much had the whole shebang. All the time. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see. Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is the second video in my mental health series and it's the first video where we're actually going to go through one of the personality disorders that I have been diagnosed with. So there are four altogether and this is the one that I scored the highest on. So this personality disorder is avoidant personality disorder. I scored six out of seven which is extremely high. The definition of what avoidant personality disorder is that I found online, it's a personality disorder characterized by anxiety in social situations and personal relationships with feelings of inadequacy and extreme sensitivity to rejection or criticism. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go through the symptoms of avoidant personality disorder that I do have and I will try to give examples. So what I'll do first is I'll just list the symptoms that I actually have. Fearful and tense demeanour, failure to initiate social contact, low self-esteem, hypersensitive or oversensitive, uh, poor self-image, anxiety about saying or doing the wrong thing, avoiding conflict, so people pleasing, avoiding making decisions, misinterpreting neutral situations as negative, no close friends, won't start new things, and vigilant for signs of disapproval or rejection. One thing I do want to make it very, very clear is that with all of these personality disorders, all four, these affect me at home, at work. Actually, being at home is my safe space. When I am out, it affects me every day. So imagine this going on every day for like 10 years and also the other personality disorders that I have on top of that. So there are four altogether. Now imagine all of these happening every day for 10 years. Imagine how exhausting and overwhelming all of that would be. Imagine thinking all the time that everybody's talking about you or that you've said something wrong, you've done something wrong. People at work are quiet but you think that it's because of you, even though it's just that they're busy. But you should know that, but you can't know that. Wanting to go out and socialise, but then when it comes to it, you cancel because for some reason you now don't want to go and you don't even know how to explain it. So you just lie and say, oh, I'm sick, but you're not sick. You just can't go. Pulling sickies at work because you just need a mental health day. You are on burnout. You feel, you wake up and you literally just cannot get out of bed. You can't tell your employer you need a mental health day because you think it sounds stupid so you pull a sickie so you lie in terms of some of these symptoms so misinterpreting neutral situations as negative so whenever i am at work if any of my colleagues are quiet i will be like are you okay and they look at me like yeah you i'm like yeah and one of my colleagues recently said to me, you know, you've only been here two hours and you've already asked me if I'm okay six times. And I'm like, you're counting? She's like, yeah, I'm counting. She's like, why do you keep asking me if I'm okay? Whenever somebody is quiet, my head goes into like, I've said something wrong. I've done something wrong. And I will start thinking about, I'll basically be paranoid. Like I'm paranoid that I've done something wrong. And I will constantly ask if they're okay all the time. One example of this actually that went a bit extreme was when I was a probation service officer. Absolutely loved that job. Like out of all 20 jobs I've had in 14 years, I thought that would be my career for life. And I left after a year and a half because I moved to a new team where I thought I'd progress in my career. And because there was more people, there were more people for me to try to figure out whether they liked me or not, or if there was anybody that I could be like friends with. And most of the time, everybody was so busy that they were so quiet. And I just couldn't help but think to myself, I've said something wrong, I've done something wrong, they don't like me, they'd all be talking if I wasn't here maybe they're talking about me behind my back and I was so paranoid and I become so obsessed with it that I would sit in silence for like four hours I'm not a silent person really I would sit in silence all morning I would eat my lunch in my car or I'd go to like another room downstairs um, away from everybody else and in the end I actually left I tried to go back to my old team but they'd already filled my position and I thought I need to remove myself from this situation and that's how extreme it got that I actually left the only job that I ever thought I would have stayed at and I actually left. So that's kind of like more of an extreme 
version. Um, I'm very vigilant for signs of disapproval or rejection. So recently at work, there's this guy who works in the kitchen as one of the chefs and he's 18 years old. And he told me to grow up, but he said it in such a serious way face because i i can't understand sarcasm i i know if somebody's joking if they tell me they're joking or if they smile or it's the kind of their body language is obvious but he said it with such a serious face and then kind of just shrugged when someone was because someone looked at him was like oh and he was like and i genuinely thought he was being serious and i cried i got really really upset and i went into another room and i cried and sobbed all by myself didn't tell anybody what had happened because i thought i i genuinely thought this he doesn't like me and he's 10 years younger than me why do i even care and it took a lot of time until he actually eventually was told by somebody chelsea's very sensitive she doesn't understand sarcasm unless it's obvious by your face um and i think you've said something that's maybe not made her realize that you were joking and uh, he actually said something to me later on in that shift and i could tell he was joking this time because he was smiling and i said to him you know sometimes i, I don't know if you're joking I, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic and he said to me i would never be horrible to you and that was when i finally thought oh my goodness thank goodness for that but i will constantly be like trying to watch people if somebody that's usually very chatty is quiet i'll be like have i done something and they're like, no. If my boyfriend gets invited out and I didn't get invited out, I'm immediately thinking, what did I do? Like, why Why am I not welcome as well? Um, it's got to a point now where that doesn't happen. I'm actually always invited out with him and his friends. But for a long, long time, many, many years, it was kind of just him and his friends. And I didn't understand why they didn't want to be around me. In terms of the failure to initiate social contact. So this is kind of like when I'm out with my boyfriend and his friends. I know them. I've been with him five years. <laughs> but even to this day, when we are out with them, I will not talk unless they talk to me first. I will be very, very quiet and i kind of just observe and I, if somebody does talk to me i'm kind of looking at their body language their facial expressions trying to see if i'm i'm being that i'm doing that vigilant for signs of disapproval thing again and there has been times where i i got told to f off uh, but we were at the pub and it was supposed to be for my boyfriend's birthday and these two people were having a private very very serious probably argumentative conversation and i went round there to be like we're here for james's birthday what are you doing and one of them actually told me to F off. And I, I walked away and I cried. I was really, really upset. And I have always felt like this person does not like me. And I think it's because I just get this vibe that they're probably not a good person. And that's another thing with me as well. Like I can get vibes whether somebody's a good person or not. And I, I kind of go with my instinct. Like I've noticed my instinct tends to always be right as well. Like if I think somebody's not great as a person, it most likely turns out to be true. And that has actually ended up being the case about somebody that we know. Oh my goodness. I will say anything and do anything if it means that somebody will like me. As I said in my first video, I'm at work. We're all talking about Boris Johnson being the prime minister. He's not anymore, obviously, but we're talking. And I said, I've met Boris. I like him. He was great. He was funny. And he was just a really, really nice person. Somebody else I worked with was like, no, I don't. And they said all the reasons why they didn't like him as a prime minister. And I then changed my opinion. Literally instantly was like, yeah, I agree. I don't either. And I completely changed my opinion to suit what they were saying because I felt like that's what I needed to say in order to be liked and not be kind of pushed out. And then I met somebody else the following day who I worked with or kind of like in the same team that said they liked Boris Johnson. So then I was like, yeah, I like Boris Johnson too. And the other person that was sat there was like, you said yesterday you didn't. And I was just trying to go back and forth and trying to suit everybody. So I have this massive need to be liked by everybody. When I was a probation service officer, there was a person who I was the probation officer for. And we had a bit of a falling out because I didn't like his attitude. So I hung up on him. I told him I was gonna terminate the call first and then I hung up on him. A week later, I thought, you know he would have got over it but he came in with an agenda like he was gonna come in and he was gonna kick off and as soon as he saw me he starts having a go at me and he doesn't let me get a word in edgeways and i felt quite uncomfortable and i actually started crying it turns out that this person actually had an issue with women in general so the probation officer ended up getting changed to a man but all i kept thinking about was what could i have said differently what could i have done differently i just wanted him to like me i don't even know this guy and he's like in his 50s but i 
just wanted him to like me. It also meant that when I was working as a probation service officer, there were a lot of times that I would make things acceptable that were actually not acceptable because I didn't want that person to not like me anymore. If somebody called me and said they couldn't attend their appointment because they were going to football training, my colleagues would have been like, well, that's not a good enough excuse. Whereas I would have said, well, actually, I think it's all right. Like I would just keep on making that kind of same excuse acceptable because I didn't want any confrontation. I didn't want any conflict and I just didn't want the person to not like me anymore. So it does affect me at work because actually there are times where I will, I will bend the rules if it means that that person's gonna still like me. Which obviously isn't a good thing and I know it's not a good thing. Another thing that I do is like, I want everybody to be my friend. I'm a waitress at the moment and I actually will sometimes meet somebody who's coming as a guest and they're eating and I will kind of think she's my kind of person and I will kind of drop hints that I don't really have friends and I'll just keep dropping hints. And at one point this girl actually wrote her number down and said like, yeah, I need friends too. And I messaged her that night and then the next day she never spoke to me again. I used to go onto like Bumble BFF as like a friendship account to try and find friends. They always fizzled out. I literally have one friend and I don't know why because I just don't know why. Like I've genuinely never had an issue with anybody in my life. I don't know. I just don't. I do avoid conflict. I will tend to cry even when I don't want to cry. Even if I'm angry, I'm crying. I cry for any emotion, but I will try to kind of avoid it as best as I can. I don't like looking at people. I have found that I can't make eye contact with people when they're talking to me. I can for a little bit and then I have to look away and I'll be looking at the window or I'll be looking at the curtains. Even my manager was like, you're talking to me and you're listening to me, but you're looking at the curtains. I don't know why, I just can't maintain eye contact with people. I can look at them in the eye and then maybe not even a minute I have to look away and I have to look elsewhere. But I'm listening and I'm talking, but I just can't. And I did it, my friend, she said that I was having a conversation with her husband and she noticed that I was listening and talking, but I wasn't even looking at him. And I think my therapist thinks it's something to do with like intimidation, like by looking into people's eyes, I feel intimidated, which I don't know if that's definitely the case, but that is me going through a lot of the symptoms and a lot of the examples. I don't know if they were the best examples to have given, but they were the ones that came into my head. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this video there but if you do have any questions whatsoever I'm an open book <laughs> like you can ask me anything and I will most likely tell you so just drop it in the comment section below or DM me on Instagram like I love it when people actually talk to me because I want everyone to like me don't I so if you have any questions just let me know but as I said earlier this is avoidant personality disorder I scored six out of the seven it was my highest scorer a massive issue that one Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something about the features You'll find the beauty goes much deeper Once you get to